Here you are. So our today's topic is tricky words. As we all know, how many of you already know that what are tricky words? Have you ever heard this term before? Or if you have any other term for this thing, tricky words. Can you come up please with some examples and what do you think are tricky words? Yes, please. Can you see my screen? They don't follow phonic rules. Okay, tell me if you can see my screen, please. Yes, we can. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So they don't follow phonics rule. Somebody said that they don't follow phonics rule. Anything else? Tricky words are also called as sight words. Okay. Fine. So uh, do you all believe they don't follow any spelling rules? It has irregular, they don't follow phonics. Kids, they're the kid, no, at the time. Yeah, at the time. Edna, oh. you are right. They tricky don't. Word. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Tricky, yeah. tricky words are frequently used words that the children are un unaware to read and write. Simply blending or listening. Okay, okay. This is, this is making sense. Tricky words mm. are uh, indeed not non-decodable. They are decodable, right? We can decode tricky words. But the rules that they need to be decoded, because in English spellings, we have rules. So the rules that we need to decode tricky words are not known to children, right? We cannot tell the open syllable rule to a new uh, child, but we need to tell them that this word is go and this word is no. This word is do and this word is to. All these words do follow rules, but we cannot teach these rules to a four-year-old or a five-year-old, right? So that's why they are called tricky words. Sometimes the spellings are also different. Like, uh, for example, if the word um, in which we have C has two sounds, right? So the word pace will be tricky for a four-year-old because it is saying the soft C sound or the word as, as, S has two sounds as well, S and Z. So this is now saying the Z sound. This is also a tricky word for a child, is. S is saying the other sound that is Z. So this is a tricky word for a child. For us, this is okay. We can um, learn about that. Why is it saying the other sound? Okay. While they are having the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If they are not having the real sound, like they change the sound like this, like C sound is the normal sound. And we say mm -hmm. K, so it's not normal for C, right? No, the normal sound of C is K. The sound that we teach children is this. It's K, 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 right? And it may say S as well when followed by E, I, or Y. This is called the soft C rule. Otherwise, C says K with uh, all the other vowels like A or A and with any of the consonant, K or K, okay? So C says K with A or A and all the consonants and it says uh, sound with E, I and Y, like in city. This is not the normal sound. This is the second sound. The first sound is K, right? send or cycle yeah they can this is this is the soft c rule so for a child of four or five year old kg1 kg2 they if they don't know the soft c rule these words are tricky but here we are not only talking about the tricky word we also need to think about about the words that are most frequently used right now cycle is not a most frequently used word do you think this? Because yes, so it's a common word, but it doesn't happen that in a sentence or in two sentences or three or in a paragraph, we have used it once or twice. We can simply ignore it if you're not talking about a cycle. But if we are talking about something in present, we will use the word is, we will use the word has, we will, sorry, S, I need to write S here. And we can use the word as. So these are tricky words, 
as well as most frequently used words. So tricky words are indeed most frequently used words that uh, do not follow the rules that a child know at a certain age. Otherwise, we can decode these words easily with some phonics rule. Okay, they are not nonsense words. They are uh, decodable. Okay, uh, another thing that is called sight words. They are almost the same thing. Uh, why do we call tricky words sight words? Because we don't teach them with the spelling. We just show the child the card that this is S, for example. Let me just show you. I'll simply show the card this to the child and I'll say this is two. Do not go for the sounds. Just look and say two. If you uh, see these two things together, you will say two. Forget about the sounds. So that's how we can name them as sight words as well. There is a really slight difference. I uh, read it in a blog about tricky and sight words, but honestly, I didn't get it very well. So if anyone of you have any specific difference, please come up with this. Otherwise, according to my knowledge, they are almost the same things. Uh, the two names for the same thing. Okay, moving on, but for our writing, they have to learn spellings too. Yeah, they have to learn spellings too. So this is what uh, children are different kind of learners, but to learn tricky words or sight words, we focus mainly on their uh, visual learning capacity, right? A child can be auditory, auditory learner, he can be kinesthetic learner, and he can be visual learner. Every child is a kinesthetic learner, but it is not uh, necessary that he is a good visual or auditory learner too. Auditory learner means that he can just listen to you and can reproduce uh, the thing that you are saying or can give you the output. Visual learner means he can see the things and memorize in his, um, and can simply memorize them. Kinesthetic learner means that he needs some hands-on experience when he is doing uh, or absorbing any idea. Uh, it should be, what should I say? hands-on experience, they should make some art and craft, they should make some, you can do some games with them to help them understand the idea, right? These type of learner are called kinesthetic learners. Now, uh, for sight words, the thing that we focus mainly is the visual memory because obviously they are not following the rules. So we go for the visual memory. We keep showing the cards to them. We keep pasting the cards in our classroom. And what else we do? We do different games, but again, they are visual game, games. Now, for example, I'm sharing my screen with you, turning on my camera. Okay, now you can see my screen. Look at this. These are some tricky words right over here. If I need to give them, okay, they are not in any sequence, right? Whatever was here on my table, I'm just showing you them. If I'm intro introducing them, she, I, and, sorry, the, she, and I, I have these three. What I will do, these could be flashcards, but I have made some flowers out of, out of them, right? I, can you repeat after me? I, what is this? I, close your eyes, open I. them. What is this? I, just keep repeating the same thing, showing them the card. Uh, look down, again, look at the card. What is this? This is I. You are just uh, focusing and uh, transferring their focus to something else, again, showing them the card. I, okay. Can you just clap three times? One, two, three. Which letter is this? I. Just keep doing this exercise for a few times. Then this is the, the, the. Explain it once. Say, do not try to spell it. This is a tricky word. You just need to look at it and say the, the, the. Now again, do some uh, activity like, can you stand up and say the? Can you sit down and say the? Can you turn around and say the? Look at the card and say the. 
then here is she. Now you have these three cards with you, I, the, and she. Can you please close your eyes? Open them. Which one is missing? I, the, which one is missing? She, she is missing. And they do reply because you are giving them a continuous help from their uh, visual to their visual memory and to their auditory memory. Show the card, repeat again and again. They can later do the piano game. Look at this. Suppose these are the piano keys. Okay. Every child should have the cards with you. Okay, if the, you are giving three tricky words, whatever tricky words are those, you can just write them on some hard paper and give every child those things. Now, I am going to say the tricky word you need to pat it. Let's try to play the piano. She, the, I, the, she, I, she, the, I, the, I, she, I, the, she. Keep saying this, first go slow. Give them the time to think and absorb. Okay, I, I, I. They, they might be, you say I and they put their hands there. Again, say, where is I? Okay, this is I. So everything is just to help them get the shape of the letter, get, uh, get uh, sorry, get the shape of the word that these three letters are making this word and they need to just say it because they cannot blend it right now. If they are at, uh, KG1 or KG2. This is this is another game. What you can do, uh, another game is it could be make slips of tricky words, okay? Just write any tricky word on the slip, fold it, put it in a bowl, uh, just uh, throw it in the classroom. Ask them to find out the letters. Whoever will get any slip will come to the teacher and will say the tricky word. If you say it right, you will get a point. If you don't say it right, you won't get a point right something like this so with the help of games and continuous visual aid you can help children to get the tricky words this is one way okay this is one way that i like to do in the class now let's move on to another thing that you will also find in jolly phonics and even in other books this is called uh, this is a paper activity right look Right, check, another go. And this, what we have to do, these are the columns here. You will show a card to children, like for, it will be written over here. If the word is she, okay, the word is she. Ask them to look at this word carefully. Once they have looked, cover it with something, with their hands or with uh, some, uh, what do you say, bookmarks or anything. You can ask them to cover it. Okay, suppose it is covered now. Ask them, to, can you just think about the letters and write the word she? They may write like this. They might write the right spelling or they do something like this. Okay. If they do something like this, ask them to check, open the, uh, remove the cover from she and tell them, have you written the same thing? She, she, or oh, there is something missing. So you can just write here and then another go. Try it once again. Do not ask them to fill the pages of the same spelling, write, write 10 times, write 15 times. This is simply nonsense. You are just not helping them. You are over burdenizing them. If they have written the right thing, well and good. Again, you can say, wow, you have done a great job. Can you please write it twice for me? Because maybe they have a good uh, visual memory, but it's short term memory. So you can ask them to write it once again. If this is the thing, again, you can ask them to write once again. This is a method that we say, uh, look, write, check, another go method. Mostly used in a school, you will find this in so many books. The second method, it would be the third. The first one was only the activities that I told you. This is the mnemonic, mnemonic, mnemonics. Okay, what are mnemonics? Mnemonics are the devices or the things that we 
make ourselves to remember some ideas or some words or some order. For example, if I give you this, we all know that there are seven, uh, how many parts of a speech? Two, three, how many parts of a speech are there? Papa and Vic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight. Now look at this. Suddenly I was not able to speak. I know there are eight parts of the speech, but I wasn't a little confused. Seven, eight, seven, eight. So I just wrote this. Papa and Vic. This is the mnemonic device for parts of a speech. Now, how is it so? P for pronoun, A for adjective, P for preposition, A for adverb, N for noun, V for verb, I for inter interjections, and C for conjunctions, right? So if somebody uh, struggles in remembering uh, the, uh, the, what do you say, the names of the parts of a speech, he can uh, memorize this device, Papa and Vic, and he can get it easily. Now, what about the order? It doesn't matter. You know how nouns come first, then pronouns, then adjective, then verb. So it is okay. The only thing that uh, counts the most that at least you should have all the names in your mind. This is something we call mnemonic device. Tricky words can also be memorized with the help of mnemonic device, but I personally don't like this method. For example, if the word is laugh, L-A, U G H laugh. So the mnemonic device of this word is uh, the children don't have to write it. Okay, they will only say laugh at the laugh at ugly goat hair. Laugh at ugly goat hair. A A U G H spelling bundle. We have got the spelling of laugh. So you can do this thing as well. Laugh at ugly goat hair means just take the first uh, letter of all the things and make the spelling of laugh. For some kids, it may work, but I think it's so challenging and, and difficult for our uh, uh, teachers first to make so many mnemonic devices and then ask children to memorize these, right? So this is another thing. If you find it good for your students or for your um, kids, you can go for this as well. Okay. Let's move on to the next method to teach children tricky words. We will talk about the uh, spelling rules a little at the end of the class. But now I'm just showing you the straightforward techniques how to teach tricky words. Hold on, please. Just a moment. Sorry for the interruption. After mnemonic device, there is something that you can do uh, more. If your children, if the class and your children are interested in some kind of pictures, like if there are more girls or if you are teaching your kids at home and they are girls, you can make some things like these like I have made some flowers because when I was teaching kids my students were girls so they love flower right but you can also make butterflies okay you can also make some feathers write tricky words on these things and stick them to your word wall or if you have a bulletin board in your uh, class if you are giving three uh, tricky words in a week or two tricky words in a week, they should be there every time on your bulletin board, on your soft board, or uh, if in is a, a home, so on the table of ch uh, children. The continuous vision of these things will help them to get the spellings, right? The meeting will end in 10 minutes. So if you want to join, you can reconnect. So different shapes, if there are boys, you can also make some cars, write the tricky words inside, paste them there, and you go. You can ask them to go and read the red car word, go and read the blue car word, whatsoever, something like these. The last and the most effective way 
of teaching tricky words. A straightforward way. Okay. Say as it spells. I'm sorry. Spell as it. The one was right. Like if I want to say the word Monday. Difference between tricky and sad words. There's no, no, not such difference. Nothing such. Okay. Okay. If I want children to write the word Monday. What is the spelling of Monday? It's M-O-N-D-A-Y. Now, what is the tricky part of this word? The tricky part is this O that is saying a sound, a sound of letter U. It's Monday, but we say it Monday. So how you will teach this to te uh, kids? Simply tell them that if you want to write Monday, please write Mon Day. Explain this on board specifically. Write the word on the board and tell them that if you want to write the correct spelling of Monday, you need to write Mon Day. It will be your correct spelling for Monday. English is a little tricky, so we need to be careful about this. If you want to write the word mother, so you need to write mother. Now, only this part is tricky, right? It's m, a, m, z, and r, mother. Everything is fine. Just this O is making the word tricky. So tell them that O is saying, yes, uh, Smitha, you are raising the hand. If you want to write mother, write mother. If you want to write okay. father, hold on, please. Write fa, a, fa, the. Your spelling will be correct. Yes, Smitha. Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, I, I, what I do in class is like uh, Monday. I just have made the pattern of M-O-N, Man, hmm. so that they can use it in monkey as well, money as well. So am I doing correctly or I'm doing something messed It's good. Up it's good. No, it's actually, let me fine, tell you no? why. It's fine. But let uh -huh. me tell you the science for this. Why always saying, uh, how about one and two? Okay, hold on, please. Uh, whenever letter O is followed by N or V or th as well if i'm not missing it o says a uh. this is the rule also, now, this rule is this rule is for you if you have the spelling of love l o v e love what is the sound of okay. o here it's uh, oh. uh, uh. it's right. uh. it's love yes. uh, uh. Mm -hmm. in the short we also write it like this okay why are we putting this e at the end so this is just to support v because english words don't end in v this is not the long vowel E. It's not anything else. O is saying a uh, because whenever O is uh, followed by V, we say it a. Uh. It's not the shua sound. It's the proper U sound, short U sound, a. Uh. If the word is like you say uh, Monday, again, mm, O is saying a. Uh, Monday, right? If the word is mother, it's saying a. Uh, and then R. Okay. So this is the rule for O saying a. Uh, I uh, teacher. Use... Yes. Sorry. Teacher, I want one question because my uh, son is in grade two, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, there is some list, list from school. They mm -hmm. say to memorize it. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, tell me the spelling of wonderful. I don't uh, spelling teach off? him like. Spell Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Uh, so he always starts like uh, he said, Mama, W U N, because it's W O N, like mom, day, like mother, as you told. Mm -hmm. It's love. Mm -hmm. So also his uh, sound is coming like a uh, mm. U sound. Yes. Right? He asked, he uh, always he asked me, Mama, sound is coming like this, and you are saying like this. So what should I say? So tell him. Uh, I tell, tell him. him. If I tell him. Great too. If he is in yeah. grade two, he is uh, ready to know this rule. Tell him that whenever O is followed by N, V, or TH, it will say the R uh sound. This is a rule of yeah. English spelling. Yeah, I got this rule, but uh, in wonderful, there is no mm -hmm. what you are saying, this uh, followed by. Uh, mm -hmm. Isn't it one? Uh, mm -hmm. 
It's one. So I can say sometimes O comes like O sound, U sound, right? Not sometimes, so. simply give them the letter. N, V, and TH. And if I'm missing, I think these are the three, but you have mm. a video on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. in which so so this is the proper rule. So in one, it's also yeah, yeah, N. Yeah. O is followed by N. Okay. So whenever these three patterns are coming in my mind for now, and I think they are the only, I guess, in which O says A. Uh. If this is O N in a word, it will be A. Uh, mm. If O V, it will be A uh, V. If this is O T H, it will be R T H. Okay, this is a proper rule. Okay, okay so you can great. give him this reason. Uh, why? What about one two? A genuine exception. O N E one genuine exception two is again something like this give uh, a rhyme for this o n e one t w o two o n e one t w o two t h r e e three so let's make a song they will get the spellings our aim is to get give them the spellings right now now whatever trick we follow no matters are there any exceptions to eg in the word move. Mm, okay, in Jolly Phonics, we say that O has the sound O, right? But in some other phonics, if I talk about logic of English, they say letter O has four sounds. O, the long O, I'm writing the sounds, okay? The long O, O can say also the long O. It can say A, uh, it can also say U. So these are the different spellings of letter, uh, sorry, sounds of letter O, but don't go for this if your kids are uh, in KG1, KG2, or even in grade one. Just keep this word simple, move. Tell them this is a tricky word and we have to read it like this. The E at the end is simply to help V because we will fall down otherwise. V doesn't have a base, so he will fall down. So to help uh, V, we put E at the end. He will support him to stand straight. You can give this story, right? English was don't end in V. That's why we put E at the end. It doesn't have to do anything with this O. It is saying the O sound move. Okay, no exception. O has different sounds again. What about November? Excuse me, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Ma'am, I have a confusion. Like in, in oval, in calf and in animals, is kinder jo a l sound or how to spell these a l sounds? Animals, calf, and oval. Calf c a l f. Okay. A l sound is the confusion. Okay, okay, okay. In calf ah, this is the this sound is calf. Okay, a l can say the a uh sound as in walk. No, I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. Ma'am, can you, ma'am, excuse me, can you please explain again uh, that O M O V E rule? How uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I will explain this and the other thing as well because it's only one minute left in the meeting to end. So please rejoin and then we shall continue. Only one minute sure. after the meeting will stop. Okay. okay.